Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to install your box for 8 speed rear derailleur to your bike. So let's go ahead and let's run through the steps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the derailleur onto the hanger with a 5mm hex head. Now when you do this, what you've got to be aware of is make sure that the piece of metal here sticking out, the tab there, it just sticks out. You see that? Just here, this bit, just there, is touching on the dryly hanger. Because if that's not touching there, when you do it up, then you won't be able to adjust the B screw later on. So what I've done is I'll just put a bit of anti seize on the thread before we put it on. And what you can do is just move it in the right position when before you go ahead and screw it on. So just start it off, make sure it's going on without cross threading it. <clears throat> then look down the back, down here, make sure it's touching as you're screwing it in. So you just keep your finger on it so it's, you know it's touching on the hanger, like that. And once it's done, you just nip it up. And you can torque that up to 7 Nm torque on that. Then we'll move on to the next step. So now we're looking from behind the derailleur. Now we've got it mounted on there. And what you need to do is get on your high screw with a 3mm hex head. So that's the one on the right. So if you screw that clockwise, then it'll move the derailleur over towards the largest sprocket, exaggerated. And if you move it anti-clockwise, you, you see it moving towards the smallest, the eleven tooth there. So yours could come anywhere. When you mount it on there, it might be, you might look at it, just pull the cage down. You're looking at the top guide wheel here. And as you can see there, it's not in line with the smallest at the back, the eleven tooth. It's over towards the second one in. So what you want to do is just get on your high screw, then turn it anti-clockwise and it'll bring it and it'll bring it back over I'll try and move the cage out of the way in a second but if you just wind it over you'll see it give it a few turns and then it'll be underneath or just on the outside of the teeth of the 11 tooth cog in you want it just on the outside of the teeth there and once it is there you can look straight from behind at it then that's the high screw set in position and you can move on to the low screw. So now we want to adjust the low screw which is left hand screw so that's going to set the dryly underneath the largest sprocket at the back whatever you've got on your cassette. So what you want to do is pull down on the dryly. now these are spring loaded so they can be hard to pull down on. Pull down on the cage to it straight down and then move the dryly over like that and see where your derailleur is. It wants to be underneath the guide wheel wants to be underneath the largest sprocket on the back. So you just go to your low screw again on the outside there and then adjust it. So you want to adjust it so it's underneath the largest at the back. So anti-clockwise we'll adjust it further that way towards the spokes and then clockwise brings it back in this way so as you can adjust it whichever way yours needs to go you might find yours is under the second one not under the largest one so you just need to adjust the screw until it's underneath the largest at the back and you can let once you've got it under there like that then you can just let go of your derailleur again and we're ready to move on to the next step so we've got new full length cable in so what we do with that is just put it down through the hole there to start with and put the outer cable with the stop on the end obviously, put that in position and it goes down through a little hole in the back there and this guide at the back like that and put it in the groove then bring it round and hook it under your pinch bolt there 
your cable. Let's get that hooked under there. When you got it in there, what you want to do is pull on the cable as tight as you can, and then when you've done it up, make sure you're not moving the trailer in any way when you're doing this. And also, before you tighten that pinch bolt up, make sure that you the shifter is shifted down to the what would be the smallest at the back. So shift down to there, the smallest. Sprocket your 11 tooth at the back. Because if you don't do that, you'll hook the cable up and you'll wonder why you've only got a handful of the gears and you're missing the other ones. It's because you haven't shifted down to there before you've hooked the cable up. So just pull on it as tight as you can, making sure it's under your pinch bolt, and then snug that down like that. Now you've hooked the cable up, so we're ready to move on to the next step. So now we've got the cable hooked up, what you want to do is look down from above, like that, straight down, and you can see the guide wheel there of the trailer, and you want it. As you can see there, it's underneath the 11 at the back. Your smallest sprocket. So then what you do is go up to your shifter. And I'll try and film it if I can. Go up to the shifter and then shift up. Like that. So if you can see there, I'll try and hold it. You can see it's underneath the next one in. Then do it again. You can see there. It's in line with the third one. You've got to look directly down from above. It might look like it's out of line on the camera, but you've got to look like that directly down. Then go again, fourth one. Then see if they're roughly lined up. So they are at the moment. You'll only go so far across because the chain's not on there. Unless you pull down on the cage as you're doing it to get the cage out of the way of the cassette but you can just check the first few make sure they're in line because if they're lined up there you know when you put the chain on that they're going to work straight away so what we do is we get the chain on just to double check them before we adjust the barrel adjuster for the fine adjustment so we've got the chain back in position now obviously I haven't cut the cable or anything don't cut that until you're fully happy with it so what I'll do now is go and shift up to the largest at the rear just so we can adjust the B screw adjustment there on the back. So I'll go ahead and shift across. So we're up on the largest now on the rear so we can go ahead and do the B screw adjustment so I'll just move the camera and I'll show you that. So we shifted across now to the largest at the back as you've seen so we do the B screw adjustment so what you're looking for is a gap between the guide wheel and the largest sprocket on the rear about an 8mm gap you want it so as it's the, the chains coming off the sprocket and onto the guide wheel not an acute angle, it's just running straight off onto it and round like that. Obviously you can adjust it if you go on your B screw, turn it clockwise, it makes the gap bigger. So if you shift it across and your derailleur stops and hits the largest sprocket, then what you want to do is wind the B screw in so as it's got enough clearance to clear the largest sprocket on the back. So that might be one thing, it might just be in the way. So you might need to adjust it depending on what size sprocket you've got on the back. So once it's out of the way you want about an 8mm gap roughly. So as the chain passes cleanly off it and doesn't get interfered with when it's going onto the guide wheel. And you want that set nicely because it alters the, it'll affect the shifting. Especially on the way back down the cassette. So if you adjust that. So there's the gaps. So like I said, you've got a nice clean gap. You should be able to have it on the largest like that, the rear and just back pedal. The chain shouldn't fall off or anything. You should just run off there nice and smooth 
ones there, like that. So I'll just shift back down now for the uh, largest. At the rear now we set the B screw. So say if you've got a situation where you was just shifting down, you shifted back up slightly, and one of the gears there is just getting hung up, it's, it's not going in correctly, and it's just skipping between one and the other, then what you want to do in that situation is go up to your barrel adjuster, and wind your barrel adjuster anti-clockwise, just click it anti-clockwise while you're pedalling. So just keep pedalling round on that one gear that's causing you a bit of a problem, and then just click the barrel adjuster anti-clockwise, all the barrel adjuster is doing is altering the cable tension. It's putting a bit more tension by clicking it anti-clockwise. It's, all it's doing is altering the tension of the cable. That's all you're doing. So if you set your low and your high limits correctly, then if it's playing up in between somewhere here, then just go up to your barrel adjuster and click that, and that should iron out any little problem you've got there. What you might have to do also is after you've rode the bike for um, say 10 hours or something like that the cable will bed in and stretch a little bit so the shift in might just go out on one of the gears so after a certain amount of time you probably have to just adjust your barrel adjuster because the train the cable stretch slightly and then it might go out a little bit so when that happens just go up to your barrel adjuster and give it a few clicks anti-clockwise just to take up the slack in the cable so once you're happy with the setup, the last thing to do is snip the cable to length. So we just cut that off and put a stop on the end. Stop the uh, cable fraying. So just crimp that on. And that's the installation complete. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.